ago, and um, he is now practicing as an attorney. And as an attorney, what he does is he helps and represents victims of accidents or victims of medical malpractice. Something that shouldn't have happened to his clients happened to them, and he makes sure that they are properly represented in the in the legal system. A um, couple of interesting things about him: he does not have a television in his home, um, and he is also Mexican American. And he is going to talk to us today while you guys are having lunch. Please help me to welcome him. How are you guys doing today? Good. Good. Okay, so I want to start out by asking you guys a couple questions. And I want to, a couple, a couple of people tell me, what do you guys want to be when you grow up? Attorney. You want to be an attorney? Great. I want to know as an attorney. Teacher. Architect. Architect. Oh, awesome. Lawyer. Lawyer. I'm sorry, Jenny. That sounds hard, but awesome. <laughs> Please. Lawyer. Oh, yeah. These are all awesome careers, yeah. I'm sorry. Doctor? Oh, FBI. Oh, FBI. Sorry, I'm very good. That's awesome. Those, those are awesome careers. Do you, you know why I asked you that? Because at some point, I was where you are. And when I was a kid, I told myself I wanted to be a lawyer. And guess what? I am a lawyer. And this is probably the best thing that I could have done with my life. Um, so I want to share my story with you so you can know that nothing is, is impossible. I want to tell you a little bit about me, a little bit about my life, so you can know that you can do it too. Um, like Mary was saying, I actually was born in Mexico. I was born in Guerrero. You guys know where that's at? Yeah. <laughs> so I was born in Guerrero. I was there until I was six years old. Uh, it's actually funny. I had a video when I was a kid. I didn't know any English at all. Nothing. Uh, I, I grew up there. I even know cows, uh, rode horses, you know, all that good stuff. Uh, when, I, when I got here, I was six years old, and we lived in extreme poverty. We were, we would often have to go to church drives. You guys know what those are? Where they give you food. They give you food for the holidays because your family doesn't have them. When I got here as well, my family went through a lot of domestic violence. My dad would beat my mom up a lot. There was a couple times when my dad almost choked my mom to death. And I had to see that. He and my brother had to see that. And let me tell you, it was a painful experience. It really was. Uh, and growing up, I was also going to friends who were getting involved with wrong things, drugs, gangs. They were all doing that. I wasn't. But they, my friends, I could see it. I could see them doing it. Growing up, I also... Had, I have an older brother, and to me, he, he was always my hero because he taught me everything I knew up until I was eight or nine years old. When I was eight or nine years old, what happened was he was diagnosed with schizophrenia. Do you guys know what that is? Yeah. For those of you that don't know, that's uh, mentally, mental, it's a mental illness. And as a mental illness, he wasn't suffering. Once he was diagnosed with schizophrenia, it completely turned my world upside down. I, I had no one to look up to because, like I told you before, my father was a father figure. He would often beat my mom up, and that's not something I appreciated, obviously. Uh, so when my brother was diagnosed with schizophrenia, I had nobody to look up to. Um, it, it was a painful experience. And during that time, it became really painful when I was in high school, when I was about your age, because it was probably the most difficult time for him and for me. 
it was the most difficult time for him because anything would get him irritated. Anything would get him mad. There was a couple of times when I was 14 years old, and then another time when I was 16 years old, he almost choked me to death. And my brother's a big guy, and three years older than me. There was another time when he almost stabbed me to death. And he did this not because he wanted to, but because of his mental illness. It, he couldn't control it. And at the time, it was really painful for me, but it was more painful for my little sister. I have a little sister, she's five years younger than me. And it was painful for the same reasons that I didn't want her to see it. I didn't want her to, see, to think that her older brother was hurting the younger people, hurting the other children. I didn't want any of that to happen. So what I would often do is try to hide things from my sister, try to help her back. It wasn't that bad. It wasn't that it was all going to be okay. I remember one time when it was my sister and my brother and I. We were at home and my parents were working because, like I told you, I grew up very poor in Adelaide. Uh, and my brother knocked me unconscious. He kicked me in the head and he sent me to the emergency room. But before that happened, my sister came out. She was 11 at the time. She came out crying. She wanted to call cops. I told her, no, it's going to be okay. The reason I did that was because I knew that if she did, they were all going to take us away. And by all, I mean the county, uh, public service, the government because we were all underage. And I told her, no, go to your room, everything's gonna be okay. So the most painful thing I've ever had to do was tell my sister, give my sister a smile while I was almost getting killed by my little brother. That was painful. Um, so, you know, okay, high school wasn't, wasn't all that big for me. Uh, what actually, the difference was, when I went to school, it was actually a relief. It was something that I could use to get away from it. Get away from friends at home that were getting into bad things, uh, the violence that my dad uh, often created. Uh, my brother, as much as it came to say, I could get away from it. So school, to me, was a relief. Uh, and that's when I started I decided nothing is going to stop me for accomplishing what I want. Nothing is going to ever tell me that I can't do something. So, long story short, why do I tell you all this? I tell you this because I want you, each and every one of you, I want you to think about everything or anything that you may go through on a daily basis or that you've gone through in your life. And stop using it as an excuse. I want you to start using it as a reason. When you, when you start using your experiences and the bad things that happen in your life as reasons to succeed instead of excuses, you'll notice that the world opens up to you. You get more motivated to do your homework. You get more motivated to do anything that you need to do in order to accomplish what you want. If you want to become an FBI agent, if you want to become a forensic scientist, like I said, that's pretty hard. Uh, but use your experiences as motivation. Use whatever you've been going through or whatever you're going to face. Use it as a motivation to succeed. My motivation has always been my mom. I don't want her to have gone through all that pain, through all that suffering for nothing. Because she suffered a lot. And like I told you, I've already given you a couple of examples. There's way more than that. I've seen my mom, unfortunately, have dead a couple of times, at least three times in my life, for my memories. I don't want all that suffering to go to waste. Number two, my brother. Although he's sick, he's mentally ill, I don't want him to, at some point, if he ever gets better, for him to be disappointed in me. I would hate that. I would hate for him to get better and say, what have you done with yourself? You could have done so much and look at this. I often, myself, I often feel guilty for the same reason. I have what he doesn't have. 
a stable mind. I can, I can, if I want something, I can work hard for it and get it. He can't. Not because he doesn't want to, he just can't. So I never want to give myself the feeling and to give him the feeling that he's disappointed. So every day I try to better myself, I try to be a better person, be a better friend, because it's an ongoing struggle. You always can get better at something. Whatever it is you're doing, or whatever it is you want to do, you can always get better at something. My third motivation is my sister. Like I told you, she's my younger sister. Why is she a motivation? I want her to always believe that she can accomplish anything she wants. You know, anything. If I can do it, she can too. I'm not that big person. In fact, I've already told you everything that's happened in my life. According to that, I shouldn't be where I am. And I don't want her to have that same thing. I don't want her to say, I can't do you. I can't do something because so and so. So those are my three reasons. Each of you have to find your own reasons, your own experiences. Use that as motivation. Use that as something to to motivate you to accomplish your dreams. I often tell Jose and a couple of other people that I always talk to, I always follow two words. Those are faith and desire. And both of those work hand in hand. When you have the desire to accomplish something, you work hard for it, you do whatever it takes to do it, to get it done. And you have the faith that that hard work will pay off. And same thing the other way. If you have the faith that everything happens for a reason, then you'll get the desire to work as hard as you have to in order to become a cop, in order to become a lawyer. If you want to become a lawyer, I'm telling you, it's not going to be easy, but it's worth it. It's definitely worth it. Now I can help my family, help my brother, whatever he needs. I can help my mom and the people that throughout my experiences that in growing up that always put me down. And one of them, one of them, which includes my father, he would tell me I would never accomplish anything. I would never amount to anything. He once told me, why am I going to school? You should get a job. It actually pays me, not like school. And I, I didn't want him to hear anything. So at this point, now it's the other way around. Now they look for me for help. Now my dad comes to me, can you help me? So I want you to use the same things, use the same motivation, whatever. Because we all go through something. We all feel as though something is keeping us from, from doing well in school, from doing well in whatever it is you're doing. We all feel that. I know it. It's, it's human nature. So the reason I told you all that is to give you that example. If I can do it, you guys can do it too. Anybody can do it. You just have to have the faith and the desire to accomplish that. And I'm telling you, you get that out of your experience. If you think you've had, uh, even now, a difficult experience, even learning English, it wasn't easy for me. I tell you, English is probably the hardest language to learn. Um, but use your experiences to motivate you, to continue on college. And then if you want to become a lawyer, go to uh, law school, that was cool. um, And you know what, it, once you have that faith and desire, you can accomplish anything. Right now, I'm thinking about going to med school. Why? I don't know, I just think it would be fun. Uh, but I have the same thing. I, I cannot let my experiences stop me. I am going to use my experiences to destroy all barriers, if you will. I will not let anything stand my way of whatever I want to become. And if, I want to, if right now I drop everything and I want to go to med school, then I will. Why? Because I need to prove to myself and to others that I can do it. So, and you take nothing out of this, except, you know what, work hard for everything, and uh, always use your experiences as a motivator instead of as an, instead of as an excuse. You'll notice that there's a huge difference in the way you look at things, in the way you carry yourself throughout life, and the way even you go with your friendships, with, with your relationships, with your family, friends, and even teachers. So, if you guys have any questions, I think I, think I covered a lot.
Um, I'm here. Do you guys want to ask me anything? Yes. Well, no. Um, yeah, what she asked is, do I have any physical scars? No, um, I don't. Because one of them was, he almost choked me to that. But I think what's more hurtful is the memory of that. You know, because sometimes uh, I'll be having a conversation, a conversation and I'll go now, and it, it'll just come back. It'll get back back. So I think more than anything, my memories are more painful than any physical harm I could ever have. Any other questions? Where did you go? Where did I grow up? Oh, uh, I grew up in Escondido. Um, Escondido is about 30 minutes away from here. It's a, it's kind of a poor environment. Um, so at least some parts it's nice, but I wasn't growing up in those parts. Um, uh, I'm from this city called, or well, this town, because where I'm from, there's like 3,000 people. Villa Maradero. But the closest city to that is Ciudad de um, I, I can't tell you much about it other than there's like nothing there. How have you gone back? Have I gone back? Uh, I did when I was 18. I um, haven't gone back since for the first story. Like, it's been kind of busy. And my mom actually doesn't like me to go back there uh, for the same reasons that. I think it brings a lot of painful memories there. Anybody else? You said you were thinking about six years old, you started Well, I started thinking when I was six years old. I wasn't conversational until I was like nine or ten. Um, so I, I learned it when I was in school. I think my first English class was actually fifth grade. Everything before that was bilingual and education. Did you have any experts on the word? His question was, did I have any mentors throughout law school? I did. I actually, one of the greatest things that I've been blessed with is I've always had the right people at the right times uh, there to motivate me and encourage me. Uh, coming into law school, I kind of didn't have very many friends, very many people that I can ask advice from. But once here, I met my friend Augustine, and through Augustine, I met Kevin Pashkow, who, I mean, we both were wrong. They had, in a way, um, inspired me more, more in the sense of I always, I never had a discipline. I never had uh, someone tell me you know what, someone to use my abilities in the right direction or point them in the right direction. I was always, you know, I always did things my way. Um, but through them, I have been given a lot of discipline, which has allowed me to enhance my abilities and make myself even a better person, a better student, a better attorney. Um, and, you know, there's always people that I look up to and I, I not only that you look up to, but I want to help. And through them, I mean, even, for example, Jose, I met him here in law school, and I learned a lot from him. Uh, he says the opposite, but I think as long as you're learning from someone and they're doing the same thing, it's a great relationship. Any other questions? The best part about my job? Uh, well, I think helping people. I, I like helping people um, because at some point they come in and they're completely freaked out. They, they don't know what to do, uh, either an accident or, or something's happened to them in the hospital. And when they leave our office, they feel a lot more secure. Uh, and I think I like that part. Uh, the worst part, I don't, I don't necessarily think it's a bad part because I enjoy it. But there's times that I go in at 6.30 in the morning and I don't come out until like 7.30 at night. So 12 to 14 hour days. Um, but I enjoy it, you know, it's, it's something I've always wanted. And 
I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let anything take it away. And I always feel that I gotta work hard because someone else is working harder than me. That's the way I do. So. Yes. How's your pay? If you don't mind. How's my pay? My pay is well. It's pretty good. Sorry? College. College. I went to, actually this is a long story. I went to San Francisco State first, then I went to USC for like three weeks, then I went to Cal State Northridge. I graduated from California State Northridge, uh, and then I came to California West for Boston. What area do you live in now? What area do I live in? I actually live a couple of blocks from here. <laughs> How long was college in between law school? College is typically about four years after high school, and then law school is three years after that. So seven total. All the time. I actually have a funny story. You, you guys know people that drag their pants? Okay, so I wasn't one of those, but my friends that weren't in my classes because I was in separate classes, my friends would make fun of me because I didn't do that. <laughs> so I, it was always kind of weird to me because my mom wouldn't let me do that. You know, I, I'm not going to lie to you. I kind of wanted to be a cool kid, but um, I, I couldn't. And my friends made fun of me for that. And as far as, I think my dad put me down more than anybody else. So I think he even denied it. So. <laughs> I don't know if he said anything. He kind of gave me a forced hug, but that's about it. I don't think he said anything. Um, but you know, I, I kind of got used to it, and at this point, it is what it is. I respect him. I, he's always going to be my father. I'm not going to change him. And my mom always taught me to respect him. But other than that, there's not much there. Um, if you could just kind of go back to high school and just imagine yourself sitting here, what would you say to yourself? You know, if you could talk to yourself, basically. Uh, I don't know. I think I would tell myself. I don't know. See, because like I kind of like where I am. So uh, just what I told everybody, because that's that's what I, I did. Um, don't focus so much on the negative that people tell you. Don't focus, use that as a motivator. Um, and because once you start doing that, once you grab onto something to motivate you to continue, your, you, your, your dreams are like endless. You can do anything. You just have to find that one thing or a couple of things that really motivate you. Whatever it is, I don't know. Just up to each person. You have a question? I like Northridge. I actually like it. I, I enjoy it. Um, Cal State Northridge is, is different, but I enjoy it. There's you know, all sorts of people, um, a lot of Hispanics, a lot of uh, African American, a lot of white. It's just everything. So it was fun. It was a fun experience. How did you like to pay for school? How did I pay for school? Um, loans? <laughs> uh, no one's in, I think undergrad, it was pretty much paid for for me, um, for the most part. I just had to pay the living expenses. Uh, I think I, I did that through some of the testing in high school, uh, in some of the classes. <coughs> While in college, did you maintain a job? Yes, I did. I worked full time my freshman year. At Sports Authority, you guys know this? Yeah. So I actually worked there. Um, and then after after my first year, I just tutored the rest of the way. I just became a tutor because it was a lot easier, at least I thought. Um, and I would I would help students, uh, and it, it gave me a lot more free time than working for uh, my school. Yes. Take a long What? Work you want to go into. And you took you said that you took out loans to pay your way through the loss Yeah. How fast was it to pay 
Are you still paying off or are you still paying off? Still paying. <laughs> uh, it, I mean, it varies. You can get, you can get scholarships. You know, if, if you're concerned about that, then uh, work hard to get scholarships. They're not easy, but you can get them. Right? Why do I think one of them become a lawyer? Everything I, I just said, um, I think it was maybe so I could help the people that I care about. Um, I always thought, as a lawyer, you can do that. Um, not only can you be there as a counselor, as a support, but you know the way the law is you know uh, the way the government works. So that's the that's main reason. Was there a smart always said I'll be a lawyer? Yes and no. Yes, because I, I actually have a video when I was eight years old and I said I wanted to be a lawyer. I yet to find it, but I know it's somewhere in my house. Um, but when I was around 18 or 17, 18 or 19, I went into college as an entrepreneur because I didn't know. I thought, for a second, I thought I should become an accountant or something related to business. But then I went back to being a lawyer, and I think that's the best decision I've made. Yes? Um, what kind of students? In high school now, beginning to prepare for law school or any other career? I think you just gotta live day by day, you know. Um, I think as in high school, there's so much going on around you. There's so many little things happening around your life, around your friends. Just try to live every day being a better student, a better person. Because if you look, I don't, I don't want to tell you, you want to look at the grand scheme of things, you can do that, but if you, if you try to accomplish any, everything in one day or in one year, even, even for me, sometimes, I want to do so much, but I got to do it day by day. If I don't, then I make mistakes, and when you do that, the grand scheme of things won't become what you want them to be. So, I think the best thing I could tell you is just live day by day, trying to become a better person, a better student, better son, a better friend, whatever it is. Just, you know, as long as you, I always think as long as you're moving forward, moving upwards, it's a good thing. Even if it's an inch, you know, it, 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 will, it will be beneficial in the long run. And what else? Yes. I'm not quite into the digital I work this Writing is very important uh, because what we do is we send out demands or complaints to insurance companies, and a lot of times it, I I I think I write all the time. I write with everything. Everything's writing. Uh, my days will be spent writing, but you know it, it's very important. And I used to hate writing when I was your age. I, that was the one class I would get away from. It. Uh, but I, I went through it and I became better at it. And the more you practice something, the better you become. I know you've heard that before, because I used to hear it all the time. But it's true, you know. You, you just got to do it. Yes? Do you have an account in like, the Oh, you want me to tell you what I want to accomplish in the future? Or? Did I have any challenges through high school? No, I mean, you want to. Uh, I mean, I think everything was kind of a challenge. Like, school wasn't necessarily easy. I, I don't know if I'm um, going straight at the question. So correct me if I'm wrong. You want to know what were my challenges in high school? No? <laughs> Was it hard for me to choose your career? Okay, was it hard? It was not hard. It was very easy because I, I got to think about, I, the way I always approach things is I want to help my family. So what can give me the knowledge to help my family? Okay, I could be a lawyer, could also be probably a doctor. 
but what else? You guys know me? There's a lot of things, don't get me wrong, but in my head, that's what I was thinking. And also, if I become a great lawyer, that probably means I can get a little bit more money. And when I do that, I'm able to help my family. So those, it wasn't hard when I, when I thought about, the, again, the three motivators, my mom, my brother, and my sister. So it wasn't hard for Okay, so what are my goals for the future? You want five-year plan, ten-year plan? <laughs> um, I'm actually working on a book right now, and, and I hope to finish that book by December. But um, that's that's all. But uh, I want to write a book. I'm thinking about going to med school, but I'm not sure yet, so that's probably not going to happen. Uh, and I just want to be the best attorney I can be. Uh, I, I want to, I've taught a couple classes, so I do want to teach somewhat. And other than that, just, you know, become a better attorney, become a better person, become, hopefully write a couple books, that would be nice. Anybody else? Please, please help me give Mr. Irving Pedroso a Wow, right? So, I don't even know what to say after that wonderful, wonderful speech.